welcome to another episode of Practical IT. In this episode, we're going to take a look at Linux log files. I will be following along with an article from LifeWire.com, and that will be linked in the description below. Before we get started, if you've not done so already, please take a moment and click the bell icon for notifications. And if you're not subscribed, please do so, and feel free to leave comments down below. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do, I'm connected to my Linux machine here. And just to give you a little proof, uh, it is a Linux Mint machine. It's running the 4.15 kernel. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change directory to slash var slash log. And we'll do an ls la. And in this directory, you will find all kinds of good information. There are, are a couple of commands you should know about, and those are head and tail, along with nano or whatever your favorite text editor happens to be. You also need to know that you've got to be root or you have to use sudo in order to actually read the logs in this directory. Just to take an easy one, we'll look at boot.log. So we'll just say sudo nano boot.log and then you can go through this file and search for anything that might be causing you problems. So that's just an example to get started. You may want to take a look at kern.log. Let's see. We do have that in here. So you might want just the last 10 lines of this particular log file. So you could say sudo tail kern.log and it's just going to give you the last 10 lines and this is showing more lines because it's wrapping. I made the text larger. Uh, likewise, you could use head to get the first 10 lines. So kind of makes sense. Head for the first 10, tail for the last 10. We could do just cat and say we want to do auth.log. And cat, as you probably know, is just going to push all of the file to the standard output, which is your screen. So this goes back to May 5th. And it gives you all the PAM Unix sessions and the TTY sessions going on for this particular machine. Another thing you could do with your log files is you might say sudo cat. We'll pick on auth log again. And we can pipe that into grep which will search for a string and we might specify my username and so then only the lines where my username appears will it actually display it to the screen this can be very useful and there is a lot more grep could do for you but that is beyond the scope of this video. So we can also look at using any of the tools that we've looked at already, bootstrap.log. So we might do sudo less bootstrap.log. And so this is going to behave just like le uh, less would for any other file. You can hit space to display one page at a time 
or use your page up and page down to move through the file. And of course, Q to exit. Another useful log file is alternatives.log. We can do sudo less alternatives.log. And so this is just a pretty short log file. Nothing too interesting in here. The next log files that it lists in the article is for Samba. So we have to change our directory again into Samba. And then we've got log files in here as well. So we can do, all right. So this one, this is smbd.1. And this tells us smbd finished starting up and is ready to serve connections. So that's the good thing. And of course, you can look at the other log files as well. And so we might look at an MBD. And this has all kinds of interesting stuff in here. Samba name server HP AMD has stopped being a local master browser for work group. Work group. Um, subnet listed. Very useful if you're troubleshooting. So there's also logs for cups. For printing so we've got older ones that are zipped but we can look at look at the access log and create printer subscription successful okay that's a good thing and that one create printer subscription successful renew subscription successful cancel successful all good okay so the last one that the article lists is light dm and of course we've got our light dm dot log is zero bytes those are all zipped here so we'll come down to seat zero Adding updating user, that's all good. And then the x-0 is empty. So there's nothing really more to see here. So the next thing that we have in the article is about rotating logs. And the reason you wanna rotate these is so that the files don't get too large. To set up the rotation of your logs, we're going to change directory to slash etsy slash look for comp files and the one we want to edit is log rotate dot comp right here okay pretty straightforward configuration file here rotate log files weekly so that is not commented out the Next line here, couple sections down, keep four weeks worth of backlogs. So rotate four. Create new empty log files after rotating the old ones. So create is set. By default, it's not going to compress the main log files. If you want to change this, all you have to do is take the pound sign off. The beginning of that line of text and then no packages own w temp or v temp or we'll ro rotate them here and that's all set up for you so really it's a pretty straightforward file and there's plenty of documentation out there if you want to make changes to this all right so we're going to exit this okay so that wraps up our look at linux log files of course there's a lot more you can do with log files so by no means is this an exhaustive look but 
It's a topic that is important and one that I have not covered up to this point. So it was worth mentioning. On that note, I'm going to sign off this video. Thank you all again for watching and for your support. Have a great day.